Hi folks, 3 8 inch corn cob rougher from Lakeshore Carbide. It's their new tool called the TAS, the aluminum shredder. Let's put it through its paces on the 770, see what we can get on material removal, feeds and speeds, and then see if this is a good tool for the repertoire. Welcome to our Wednesday widget. Really important, measure your tool run out. We did so here by having to extend the tool temporarily just to get a portion of the shank that we could use to measure the run out. The corn cob didn't lend itself to finding the peak flute height. That's okay. And I like that I'm getting about five tenths here. If it were a smaller tool, I would dial it in more. Five tenths is great here. First cut that we're going to take is going to be 375 surface feet a minute. So on the low end of the RPM range, five thou per tooth, 60 thou width of cut and a 0.75 inch depth of cut. So ho hopefully this is pretty easy going, about two and a half cubic inches a minute and about half a horsepower. Take a look at these chips. This is what I love about this tool. It's a good chip, it's a real chip, it has thickness, but they're tiny, they would compact really well. That's awesome. So we're doing the same thing we did in the 770 Steel Speeds and Feeds video with the L20 P1Y0 to automatically update our work offset. Cut number two, 5903 RPM and 76.4 inches per minute. That's all I've got to do to change it, especially because right now we're keeping the same 60 thou width of cut. So bumping up the surface feet, same chip load per tooth, same width of cut, depth of cut. So it's just bumping up the material removal to about three and a half cubic inches and a little bit more on the horsepower. The big difference though is that increase in surface footage. So definitely had some spindle strain, a little bogged down on that last cut. Let's try it again. Maybe with the higher RPM, we'll have more torque. Next cut. Again, I was thinking let's push the service footage. You're about to see, I regret that. But the idea here is we're keeping the chip load per tooth the same. We're just increasing the RPMs or surface footage. That has the re result of also increasing the feed rate. In this case, up to about 110 inches a minute. Okay, this is the cut I think we're gonna like. I'm backing the surface footage back down to 450 surface foot or about 4,500 RPMs, increasing the chip load per tooth. That puts us at 82 and a half inches a minute. What that does, the higher chip load per tooth means the cutter is more engaged into the material and it can actually stabilize your cut more. Same with the cut and depth of cut. About 3.7 cubic inches a minute. I was a little bummed. I'd wanted to get to four. But let's take a look. So to recap, it was the lower surface footage that I ended up liking with a little bit of a higher chip load. Here's the thing, when I was editing this video, I realized, gosh, I, I left something on the table, which is I should have even further reduced the surface footage and increased the width of cut to see how that acts, or maybe you say kept the width of cut at 0.08, but kept the inch per tooth at 0.07 or something, just to see how that acted so we'll do that for next time, but a good, I, I highly encourage you guys, link to the, down to the spreadsheet. It's a really good framework to start experimenting, learn tools and build up recipes. Let's take that last recipe, which is pushing it. Let's apply it to a 2D adaptive. So 450 surface feet a minute, six thou per tooth, that's 82 inches a minute. But here is the crazy thing, folks. Look at that helical ramp. Apparently this tool can go up to 45 degree ramp angle, which is just bonkers. We are gonna try that probably on the Haas. Here is 12, but take a look. You know, we normally do something between two and four degrees. This is what it looks like with three. That's normal. That's a nice gentle helical ramp in. 12 is crazy. The other important settings, make sure to set your no engagement feed rate to the max of your machine. I've got uh, 4 thou tolerance and I've got smoothing set at 2 thou. What is smoothing? Two identical tool paths. The first one 
has smoothing turned on. See the black points? The black points mean it's basically a new line of G code. So it's how smooth the controller is able to function because it's how many lines of code it has to process. With smoothing turned off, look at the number of points. It's going to create jerkier, jittery motion, and it doesn't do us any good, especially on adaptive. Smoothing is your friend. Well, I really think we might break this tool. Uh, let's rock and roll. Insane, insane, oh my God, oh my God. So the spindle definitely loading down. At first that bothered me and I thought, no, no, no. And then it was stable. So I'd be curious to see what you guys say, but I think I'm okay with that. It's not continuing to get worse. No, I wouldn't run it lights out like that. But again, it performed well throughout the pocket here. Wow. Folks, I hope you guys have learned, hope you enjoyed something. The big question for me was, I'm a shear hog guy. I love the shear hog. I like the performance of it, the material removal. I like the fact that you invest more in the tool holder, but you've got relatively inexpensive inserts. The reality is they're totally different tools. So let's talk about that more in next week's TAS video where we're gonna put it through its paces on the 1100. Take care, folks. See you soon.